Get that family together. Come on. Put your hands together. I want to congratulate our graduates, William, Amiri, Dulcie, Brian, Alexis, and the Leon. All those finishing up school. Welcome back home. Come on. I dare you to praise them. Get your family together. Get around that, that screen. Put it on the big TV. And wait on the Lord. Come on. God is moving. Come on. Big shout out to our graduates. Excited for them. Come on. I'm so glad. Come on. Get your Bibles, your pen. Come on. Take some notes. Come on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I hope you're waiting on the Lord. You know that God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Amen? And he's doing it in you and through you. Amen? In you and through you. Never forget that God is with you. Amen? So we're going to wait on him. We're going to look for God to speak to our hearts today in a mighty and a fresh way. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Saints, we're going to be talking about a heart checkout. Again, a big shout out to our graduates, uh, each and every one of them, William, Amiri, Brian Drakeford, Alexis Sanders, and Leon Sanders. Love you all. A big shout out to you all. Hopefully this message will minister to you. We're going to get ready to go into prayer. Praise God. So bow your heads, get your families together, join us in prayer. Let's believe God to speak to our hearts. From my home to yours, amen? How many know the anointing is what breaks the yoke? And we need the anointing of God. Father, we just thank you right now. Come on, give him some praise. We praise you, God. We know that you inhabit the praises of your people. We clap, we applaud you, we lift up holy hands, and we say you are God all by yourself, God. We render every work of the enemy, God, defeated in the name of Jesus, that you have arisen and God and the enemy is scattered, oh God. And we thank you for your anointing that breaks the yoke. God, we say, God, speak to our hearts as we get into your word. Cause Howard to sit down. Holy Spirit, you rise up and you speak. God, anoint these lips of clay that they may declare your truth and bring transformation to the lives of the hearers on today. We thank you, Lord, for this Memorial Day weekend. We thank you, Lord, for these graduates. We thank you, Lord, for the people who become. We thank you for those that are on Facebook and on YouTube and all different platforms that are hearing this word on today. And I pray that, Lord, it will be a, a demarcation in their lives to bring forth change and transformation in Jesus' name. Come on now, in Jesus' name, one more time for the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah, the book of Isaiah chapter 60. And we're going to get right into the word of God. The word, the Bible says, you will know the truth. That's the truth of God's word, and it will set you free. God wants to free you on today, amen? So let's look for God to speak to us and change us from the inside out. Right in your living room, right in your bed, wherever you are right now, expect God to meet you. The Holy Spirit can meet you right where you are. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Turn to somebody and say, your light has come. Come on, your light has come. Arise, shine, for your light has come, graduate, and the glory, saint, and the glory become church, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Amen? I hope you're waking up about now. I hope you're feeling that God is doing something in your life even in the lock-in, even in the shut-in, 
Even as you've been off work, you may be laid off. I don't know what your situation. You may still be going to work, but God is moving on your behalf. Amen? For behold, darkness shall cover the earth. Amen. It says, let me go back and say that. Arise, shout for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. The Lord has risen upon you. The Lord has risen upon me. And it says in the second verse, for behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the people, but the Lord. Everybody say, but the Lord. Thank God it doesn't end in darkness, but the Lord will arise upon you, upon me upon you and his glory will be seen upon you and nations shall come to your light and nations speaks of people and tribes and nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising understand this this is a season for god's grace and favor for the people of God. As you walk in his word and in his will and in his purpose, expect God to move. Expect God's favor. God has been speaking to my heart during this time that he is unleashing his favor and grace on the people of God. And God says, guess what? You are a chosen generation, a peculiar people. I've called you out of darkness into the marvelous light so that you can show forth my glory. Amen. And God spoke to me, says, you're going to come out increased in this time of shutting. You're going to come out blessed in this time of shutting in your bank account, in your finances, in your jobs. There's going to be an increase. God is trying to move some of us from, from one place to the other, from glory to glory. Even your some of you are business owners. God is shifting how you're doing business. And he's opening new avenues, new streams of income for his glory. Amen. I wish I could say it was all about you. Amen. But it's not. It's about what God wants to do through you. Amen. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Glory to God. Now, let's look at Matthew chapter 12, verse 35. New Living Translation, amen? And we're going to look at it in the King James, amen? We're going to look at New Living first. It says, a good person produces what? Good things. Everybody say good things. From the treasury of what? A good heart. When you hear the word see treasury, you think about a place where wealth is cut. Of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of a what? Evil heart. King James Version says it this way. A good man out of good treasure of the heart bringing forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure, bringing forth evil things. Amen. How many know you're not called to be evil? Amen. That word produces in the NLT version where it says produces good things means to bring forth. Amen. It, mean, it means to things coming out of you. You can't stop it from coming forth. It just does because that's who you are. If you're good, good things are going to come out. Amen. Likewise, if you're evil, though, you're going to produce evil. Amen. We said before, evil is living backwards. Literally, it's living a backward life, not obeying the word of God. Amen. So you're going to produce a what? A backwards life, an evil life. But God says, and he's called me to, to live a good life. Amen. He says, I've called you to life and life more abundantly. The enemy came to kill, steal, and destroy. That's evil, living backwards. But God says, I've come that you might have life and life more abundantly. Notice, God is in good. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, you need God to be good in your life. Amen. God wants the good to come out of your life if you're in God. Let me say that again. God wants the good to come out of your life, brothers and sisters, if, guess what, if he's in your life. James 1 and 17 says this, much like this, ESV version. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights. That's Papa. That's our big Papa. That's Father God with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. There's no change in God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. His word is standing true. Amen. 
That's a promise that he gives us, praise God. Matthew 12 and 35 and the New Living Translation. Let's translation. Let's look at that a little bit more. I'm so excited to be with you today. I can't wait to be able to see you in person. I know we're getting closer to that day. We'll be announcing that. And also we have our special series that we're trying to do around two o'clock, between one and two o'clock today. And we'll be sending that out for you on love and respect, on relationships. I want to encourage you to be a part of that as well. Amen. It says a good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. That's Matthew 12 and 35. I'm going to keep, I want, I want to get this scripture in your spirit. A good person, say that's me, produces good things. That's what I'm called to produce from the treasury of a good heart. Amen. Inside your soul, your mind, your will and emotions is a good heart. Amen. And out of it flows the issues of life. A good per person produces good things from what is in their heart. What's in you will come out of you. Let me say that again. What's in you will come out of you. Now, understand this. If you have God in your life, good things are called to come out of you. Things that make a difference in the world. Things that changes people's lives. You know, we say change people, change people. Amen. We say through loving God, loving people. Guess what? Change people will change people. Get this transformed people, people that have been transformed from the inside out will do what? Transform people. You are the real transformer. Amen. Everything else is an imitation. Things that reach into heaven, guess what? Bring heaven into the earth. Things that reach you, being a citizen, the Bible says, of heaven, you are called to bring heaven to earth. You being the ambassador of, of reconciler, of man to heaven, amen, we bring heaven to earth, thy will be done, amen, thy kingdom come on earth, on this earth, how many of you came from the ground of the earth, as it is in heaven, amen, God wants to use you, now let's break this scripture down just a little more, first of all, Jesus said in Matthew 12 and 35, a good person produces, everybody say produces, it, it didn't say lay stagnant. <laughs> it didn't say procrastinates. It says a good person produces. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. See, one thing I want you to get in your spirit. It's not right or even possible for a believer in Jesus Christ not to produce. See, you're producing either for good or for evil. Amen? If you're in Christ and you're walking in God's word, guess what? You're producing what? For good. But if you're living backwards, even if you are believing, you're not walking in the word of God, your life will produce evil. It's time to get in the word, saints, and have that good life. I highlighted this up here because I want you to get this more. It's not right or even possible for a believer in Jesus Christ. Notice the key is being in Jesus Christ to produce, not to produce. Understand this. I really believe that the enemy, his plan has convinced some believers that the output of their lives doesn't matter. Turn to somebody and says, it really does matter. It just really, it really does matter. It really does matter. Amen? The output of your life does matter because it brings the manifestation of God in the earth. Amen? And God in these last days is manifesting himself through his people. And let's get, get this. And I've been saying this for over 20 years now. It's going to be a no-name movement. God's going to be using ordinary people to do some extraordinary things. Amen? Business owners, people in the marketplace to bring forth revival. Amen? It's not going to, it will not be televised on TV. And it will not be on TV 57. God's going to be doing miracles in the streets because God has called his people. Guess what? To, to walk, the Bible says, these signs shall follow them that believe to walk in the streets and the highways and byways and bring forth transformation and change. Amen? Amen. Understand this. The enemy has convinced some believers that the output of their lives doesn't matter. But get this. God does not expect something good to come from them. Amen? Listen here. There's an intended result that Jesus has for your life. He's looking for those that are in him to bring forth good. Let me say that again. Those believers that are in him to bring forth good. Listen to this. 
There's an intended result that Jesus has for your life. Every single day, every single day, something is supposed to be produced through you. Let me say that again. Every single day, something is to be produced through you. None of us can say that they are not responsible for what God is doing in our homes, in our workplaces, and the communities of our world. Amen? Understand this. What is happening around you is a product of your life. What is happening in your family is a product of your life. What is happening in your children is a product of your life, parent. What is happening on your job is a product of your life. In your environment, you are the transformer. You are the changer. I have parents come to me all the time. I've been pastoring for over 20 years now. And I can hear, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why this is happening in my home. Parents step back. Spouse will say, I don't know why this is going on in my marriage. Step back. Ask the Holy Spirit, how do you want to transform me in this area, God? How can the good or the God that's in me can come out and produce good in this situation? Somewhere there's a deficit. Somewhere I'm living backwards. And God, you're trying to what? He's trying to get me to live forward into that abundant life so I can fulfill his destiny for my family, for my job, for my future, for my community. Amen? None of us can say that we're not responsible for what God is doing in our homes, workplaces, or community or words, worlds. God does not place his Holy Spirit in anybody's life without the purpose of them producing something. God has called you to produce good. You are not called to produce evil. You are not called to live backwards. God has raised you up to produce good. Now understand this about the Holy Spirit. There's a raw material called the Holy Spirit that God places into the hearts of believers when we get saved. And that Holy Spirit is put there for the sole purpose of producing, for production, producing God. It is a, he is one of the Godheads. He is living inside of you so you can produce just like your father. He will guide you. He will convict you of all truth. All you have to do is say, Lord, I, I, Holy Spirit, I want you in my life. I yield to your will and your way, and he will speak to you. If you say, Holy Spirit, speak to me, he will speak to you, and he will guide you and direct you in your decisions. But you got to, guess what? You got to invite him in. Amen? You have to ask him to be a part of what you're doing. You just can't assume that he's going to be there. Amen? The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. You look at me and you say, Pastor, I thought I was just supposed to be blessed. Understand this. You are blessed. But God has blessed you so you can be a blessing to others. Amen? He's going to get it to you if he can get it through you. He's trying to, he wants you to be a river of life. He wants you to be a conduit of his glory. That brings us to John 7 and 38. Amen? He that believes on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly, out of his spirit, out of his soul shall flow rivers of living water that are going to overflow and touch a community and touch our families and touch our marriages and heal our relatives. Amen? When you have God's Holy Spirit placed into your life, something is supposed to flow out of you. Amen? Something is supposed to be produced, and that thing is good. Jesus told us what kind of things are supposed to be produced. It says Good things, amen? It says good things, good things that make a difference in this world, things that change people's lives, things that reach into heaven. Everybody say my life is called to reach into heaven and bring it down into the earth and allow the kingdom of heaven to exist right here in this world. That's why Jesus said over and over, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, amen? Because he was from heaven and he was bringing heaven down to earth. And now the king lives inside of you. And as you seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, the manifestation of who he is is found in your life. How many know favor is not fair? I can't help it that your family is blessed. I can't help it, amen, that there's loved ones that may, that may uh, uh, claim the name of Christ, but yet God's glory is not on them because they're not seeking him. This is a time to seek God and not be ashamed for what God is doing in your life. Amen? Amen. This is not time to be a casual Christian. This is time to be committed in what God's called you to do and understand there's a purpose and there's a destiny.
for why he's called you. Graduates, I hope you're hearing me. I hope you hear me as you have graduated during this time and this unique time. It's not like any other. The way you've, it's, it's not like any other. It's been a peculiar time, but God has raised you up for this unique time, for this dark time, amen, so that his jewels, you are God's jewels, amen, you are his hidden treasures, can be, can be seen by the world. God is launching you into this world to make a difference. Remember, it's not about you. It's all about him. Hey, hey, parents, get your get your children, get your graduates. Let them know this. Let them hear what Pastor's saying right now. It's not about you. It's about what God wants to do through you. Those 4.0s, those great grades that you had, those scholarships that many of you got, it's not about you. God has raised you up for a purpose and for a destiny. There are many prayers that went into you manifesting who you are. You stand on the shoulders of giants. There's some grandparents that prayed for you that you never met. There's some great, great grands that prayed for you that you never met. And you're fulfilling the destiny of their prayers right now. Amen? Amen. I pray you receive that. Amen? Parents, I pray you understand that. Amen? God wants you to understand this. There is a reason that God has blessed you financially. It's not just for yourself, saints. God's not bringing you increase just for you. It's bigger than you. It's bigger than you. There's a reason you have the job that you have and that you're getting promotions. There's a reason that God has blessed you with businesses and more business ideas and witty inventions and all the things he's blessed you with. It's not about you. One of the biggest deceptions of the enemy that, he, that, God will, that the enemy will try to bring when God is blessing you is to make you think that it's all about you. I'm telling you, saints, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about him. What God's doing in this church is not about me. It's not about you. It's about him, the Lord of Lords, Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Amen. He is our source and our supply. Amen. And amen. If God's blessed you with a house, don't you start thinking that you did it in your intellect because God, you know where God brought you from. Amen. As you finish those degrees and you're getting the, and you're excelling, you better know that it was God that did it. Amen. There's a reason that you've been given the promotions and the raises and the bonuses that you've been given so that you can produce good things. When we need our bills paid, we go to praying. This is what we pray. God, I need a job. God, we come up to the altar. Lord, pastor, pray for me. We I need a job. And guess what? God gives us a job. But understand something, God just blessed you with something not just for you, but he blessed you so that something can come out of you and come through you for the kingdom. Do you understand what I'm saying, saints? God has a purpose and a destiny for your life. Let's look at it again, Matthew 12 and 35. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. Good stuff is produced from a good person and where does it come from? The treasury of their good heart. And we said God is in good. Amen. A treasury is a place where you keep something safely until you are ready to give it away. Let me say that again. A treasury is a place where you keep something safely until you are ready to give it away. Until you are ready to give it away. Not to hold on a key. Until you are ready to give it away. That means God has access to it. Does God have access to your life? Let me say that. And let me ask that question. Does God have access to your life? See, it matter, it's a matter of the heart. It's a matter of how yielded we are to him. God says this. Guess what? Guess what? In his word, he, he, sp he spoke this to me early on. Either he's Lord of all. Or he's not Lord at all. Are you surrendered to him? <sighs> if the heart is right, good stuff will be the result. The treasury of a good heart will release into the world. Let me ask you this. Let's bring you say, well, Pastor, God has my heart. He has my heart. Good stuff is flowing from me. Praise God. This treasury is rich that God has given me. You agree. You see that. 
Amen? And understand this. Rich is not what you have in your bank account. You have to understand that faith produces what you need in this earth. Amen? Faith produces, is the key, is the currency for the kingdom. Amen? If you have rich faith, the manifestation will come as you trust God and walk in his way. Amen? I'm a living witness of that. Amen? Let's keep going. Let me ask you this. If God got a hold of your checkbook, would you let him write any check he wanted to? Oh, Pastor, why do you have to deal with that? Because where your treasure is, that where your heart will be. If, let me ask you this, sister. Let me ask you, man of, of God, woman of God. If God got a hold of your checkbook, would you let him write any check he wanted to? Think about it before you answer that. If God got a hold of your checkbook, would you let him write any check he wanted to? Or are you someone who would say, hey, Jesus, no, nah, stop, 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 that's mine. Or are you someone that would say, hey, Jesus, that's yours. Which one are you, the former or the latter? God wants you to be that one to say, that's yours, God. See, there's a difference. I just tell you, if it's not his, it won't be yours much longer either. Because guess what? You won't be able to keep what God has for you, amen? It just will go through your hand. Over and over and over and over. I got excited there. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Matthew 6 and 19. Calm down, Howard. Matthew 6 and 19. Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroy them, and where these break in and steal. 20 verse. Get this. Store your treasures where? In heaven. Where moths and rust cannot destroy, and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. Understand this, saints. I'm going to go off the script. Amen. Only what you do for Christ will last. Amen. One of my favorite games is Monopoly or Cash Flow by Rich Dad. It's different games that deal with money. I love those games. But I'm going to use Monopoly because many of you have played Monopoly before. And I love winning. I love winning everything. Getting land, real estate, buying restaurants, having everything, having all the money. That's my goal. I'm, I'm taking no prisoners when I'm playing that game. But here's the thing. When the game is over, we got to give all the money back and we got to put it all back in the box. Let me tell you something. When the game of life is over, you can't take none of this stuff with you. And I'm telling you something, if you give it to the wrong people, it'll destroy their lives. But only what you do for the kingdom will last. Are you looking out just for yourself or are you looking out for the kingdom? Amen. Now, Jesus was flat out talking about money here. And he's telling us that if we put all our money into the world, it's all just going to get wasted. But when we invest into the kingdom of heaven and into kingdom work, let me say that again. When you invest into the kingdom of heaven and kingdom work, Moths and rust can't destroy it, and thieves can't break in and steal it. See, the, the, the Egyptians tried to keep this stuff. They thought they could take it with them, so they made some pyramids that they thought they, they could have an afterlife where they could keep these treasures, and they would enjoy all that they earn on earth in this afterlife if they stored it in this pyramid, but they couldn't keep it. Many of those pyramids were broken into, and the riches were stolen. Only few that we have gathered weren't broken into. Why? Because moths and rust can't destroy it. And thieves can break in and steal it. Because moths and rust can destroy it, that is. And thieves can break in and steal it. But when you give to the kingdom of God, that's an eternal gift. Amen? When you give to the work of God, your generosity, your giving earns eternal rewards that no one can take away from you. See, what, what is the price of a changed life? I'm going to let you know there's an economic value to holiness. Is the economic value to being set apart by God that brings forth changes in the life of men and women. See, I guess you, I love, I love, I love giving to good works, but I love it when I see, when I give my time, my talents, my treasures to a family, and I see sons rising up and being good sons, daughters rising up and being good daughters, husbands rising up and being good husbands, wives rising up and being good wives, single parents rising up and handling their business 
as a man or woman of God. I love to see the transformation of God. Amen. Matthew 6 and 21. It says this and it makes it plain. Jesus talking is in the red. Wherever your treasure is, there the desire of your heart will also be. Understand, you said, Pastor, why are you talking about this now? Because it's all related to the heart. And I'm telling you, God's blessings upon blessings are coming on the people of God. My, my question to you, how are you going to handle it? How are you going to treasure it? How are you going to keep it? Amen? Keep that heart good so you can walk out the goodness of the Lord. See, now we're talking about raw ingredients here. We're talking about producing things. So what is the result of the money that God gives to you? What are you doing to support his work in this world? How is the kingdom of God benefited by blessings that God gives you? Look at verse 21. Wherever your treasure is, there is the desires of your heart will also be. See, it's a matter of the heart, saints. It's not a matter of how big your checkbook is. It's a matter of how big your heart is. When we have... A church with people with big hearts, we can do big things. Continually, I'm always asked the question when people hear about all the things that we're doing at our church, you must have, they, people will make this come. You must have a big church. You must have a lot of people there or some rich people there. And I said, no, we have an a, a, a awesome church, a small church with people that have big hearts, big hearts, big loving hearts. Amen. Amen. See, when, when, understand this. When the offering goes up this week, it's not because the Lord brought a millionaire into our church. It be, it's because somebody's heart was open up to what God wants to do through them. Amen? What God wants to do to them and through them. It's because someone let God get a hold of their checkbook. Contrary to the world, God uses ordinary people, no-name people, to do extraordinary things. Understand something. When you let God get a hold of your checkbook, you are not only giving him the opportunity to write checks, you are giving him the opportunity to make deposits in your life. Glory to God. That's in the gold right here. When you let God get a hold of your checkbook, you're not only giving him the opportunity to write checks, you are giving him the opportunity to make deposits. I call that the great exchange. Whatever you give it to God, God always deposits more into you. Amen? Luke 6 and 38 is an example of this. Watch this right here. It says, give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Your blessing is determined not by your ability or your knowledge or how hard you work. It is determined by your heart commitment to God. Where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. If your heart is a giving heart, your giving will return back to you in full, pressed down, shaken together, running over, poured into your lap. That's why the scripture tells us to give with a cheerful heart. Amen. See, many of us have been blessed not because of our IQ being so high. Some of you know, amen, it wasn't because of your business savvy that that business is doing good or your education, amen, or your degrees or your abilities. Although mistaken, we think that it is sometimes. We think we're all that in a bag of chips. But understand this, many of us have been blessed because of our giving hearts and God, guess what? Deposits his glory in us. Amen? And arise, shine, for his glory has come. And guess what? Darkness is going to be, but guess what? He will arise on you. If you're a believer here today and you are blessed financially, here's one thing you better know, you better know, and you never better forget. It's probably not because of something you did. It's probably because of something God did in your life. You did not deserve that promotion, but your heart was right, so you got the position. You didn't have the means to start that business, but your heart was right, so God found a way. Understand that you said, well, Pastor, I studied that. Who gave you the ability to study? God did, amen? Who gave you the ability to be aggressive on that job? 
God did, amen. Who kept your family while you were pursuing your dreams? God did, amen. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. He is our source and our supply, amen. Everyone else was getting laid off on the job, but your heart was right, and God kept you working. You couldn't figure out how to make things work, and it looked like you were going to go bankrupt, but your heart was right. And God began to bless your faithfulness. Some of you have had to file bankruptcy. And in two to three years, God has restored you like it never happened. That's the grace of God. That's the grace of God. Do you know why I love to talk about giving? Because I love to see people get blessed in the faith. God gave us the greatest gift in his son. And when we give, we imitate the Father God. Glory to God. God's called us to be imitators of him. Glory. I hope you heard this. God gave us the greatest gift in his son, Jesus Christ. And when we give, we imitate the Father God. I don't know about you. I want to be like, like daddy. I want, I want to be like, like my source and supplier. I want to have his heart. I want to live like him. And I want to produce like him. Amen. See, the church is blessed. This church, Become Church, is a blessed church. We are a blessed church. Understand this. As members, you've been faithful to God, so he's been faithful to you. He's been, we've been faithful to God, so he's been faithful to us. And as we trust, and, and he, he will trust you to be a conduit for his kingdom. God is investing in us so that we can, so, so guess what? so that we can invest back into others and that we can work, amen, with a good heart before him. It's all about the heart. It's all about the heart. Matthew 12, verse 35. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. Understand something today. God did not bring you into his kingdom for you to be a consumer. God's called you graduate. God's called you member of become to be a producer. Many of you came, when you came to the church, you were needy. You came, you come as cons consumers, but you leave as producers. Let me say that again. You come because the church is an emergency room. You come hurting, amen, but you leave as producers, amen. He brought you into his kingdom to be a producer. He has invested in you not so you can be blessed, <laughs> but so that you can also be a blessing. Amen. Not for you just to receive. Oh, Lord, just give it to me. Give it to me. Oh, let me just sit on my blessed assurance and just take, 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 take. No, but God's called you so you can give, give, give. Oh, there's a need here. Let me meet that need. There's a need here. Let me meet this. Oh, I don't, you don't have to mention me on the mic. I don't have to, I don't have to, I don't have to walk around like a peacock and strut. You know, because peacocks like the strut, but eagles fly. See the difference between a peacock and an eagle? <laughs> a peacock, he, can, he, he can't fly, so he has to strut. See, a lot of times when you're not soaring with God, you got to get a whole bunch of accolades from men and recognition from men. But when you're flowing in, 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 in the blessings of God, you understand what you do, what you do in secret, God will reward you openly. Amen? Hallelujah. Let me ask you this question. I have a few questions for you. Get this now. Try, time to look inward. What is being produced in your life? Is love? Is grace? I'm talking about unconditional agape love now. I'm not talking about this friendly phileo love. I'm talking about unconditional agape love. Is grace? God resource at Christ's expense? God's unmerited favor? Is it being produced in your life? Is forgiveness being produced in your life? Not unforgiveness, forgiveness where you're releasing people quickly. Is generosity and kindness, is that being produced in your life? Is help and aid, can people depend on you to help and aid them when there's in a time of need? See, stuff that God can use to further his kingdom in this world, God wants to do it in you and through you. So I hope all these things are being produced in you. 
Because I want to see your life blessed. I want to see God do great things through you. I want God to use us together to do great things in this world that we're living in and make a difference. The question I pose to you again, are you a consumer or are you a producer? I want to be a producer. How about you? How about you? I want to be a producer. I want to make a difference in this world for God's glory. I got. Th I got. I have three questions I need you to ponder, and, and for homework. Everybody say homework. Get ready to write these questions down, because guess what? We're going to come out of this thing stronger. God is realigning our missions and our visions. Amen. Pull those things out. Go back and look at them. See if you're fulfilling what God's called you to do. And I want you to ask yourselves these questions. These questions. Three anointed questions. In what area of your life has God blessed you? What raw materials do you have? Not just one thing. Give me several things that God's put in your life to be a blessing. Give me at least three things. There's three things, amen? If it's confidence, that's a raw material, amen? If it's intellectualism, that's a raw material. What has God placed in your life? If you can, are a good communicator, that's, that's a, if it's money, amen? What has God placed in your life? If it's the gift of service, that's a raw talent, amen? Secondly, so the first one was, what area of your life has God blessed you? What raw materials do you have, Amen? Secondly, what does the treasury of your heart look like? If I could see inside the treasury of your heart, what does it look like? What changes need to be made so you can become a producer in God's kingdom and avoid consumerism? What changes? All of us need transformation. All of us need change. What changes need to be made in your heart? Amen? Amen. This is the life application bridge. We're trying to apply this word we receive. And thirdly, what are the good things that God is wanting to produce through your life? What are the good things that God is wanting to produce through your life? What is going to come from your life when it's all said and done? What are the things that you've done that will stand for Christ? I'm not talking about this earthly things. I'm talking about for the kingdom of God. And I have an even simplified version of these questions out here. I got kids here. Keep it simple. Say, what has God blessed you with? That's the first one. Secondly, is your heart right so God can work through you? So when you evaluate the treasure of your heart, I'm basically asking, is your heart right so God can work through you? And thirdly, what's going to come through you for the sake of the kingdom of heaven? What's going to come through you for the sake of the kingdom of heaven? Saints, God is doing some great things in your life right now. God is changing us and transforming us through his word. The only way that this change can occur and this self-introspection is through the working of the Holy Spirit. God wants you to come out better. He wants his favor to be seen to all the world. He wants to use you. That's right, little old you, little ordinary you. He wants to use you to do some extraordinary things. Get out of fear. Get out of doubt. Get out of unbelief. And walk in God's grace. Grace not in your own ability, but grace in his ability working through you. And watch what he does. Get out of your own way. Leave self-sabotaging behavior behind and begin to embrace the grace of God for your life. So that you can see with the eyes of faith. You're saved by grace through faith. See, the, 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 the gateway to the faith that God's called you to walk in that's going to produce those works is by receiving the grace. The more you give others grace, the more grace you receive. Let me say that again. The more you forgive others, the more, guess what? You can, you can receive that deeper grace from God. There's errors in your heart where you need to release some people. Let them go so you can get into your destiny. Watch what God does. Come on, let's let's pray. Let's talk to daddy right now. Bow your heads, right? Wherever you are, just bow your heads. Father, we just thank you right now. I thank you for every person under the sound of my voice. And Lord, we pray for a total surrender. I pray for the heart that doesn't know you, Lord. God, we, we, we say right now, we understand that you died on the cross 
that you were buried and that you didn't stay in the ground. On the third day, you rose. God, you rose, God. Jesus Christ. And we declare that you're Lord and Savior over our lives. And that because you got up, we can get up out of our dead situation and walk in resurrection life. And Lord, I pray for that person that knows you, that's a believer, of the saints of God. I pray for us right now, Lord, that you would change us from the inside out. Don't let us stay in complacency. Don't let us stay in stagnancy and procrastination and fear and doubt and unbelief. But God, I thank you for the courage and the faith that come from God. We embrace it right now, Holy Spirit. We embrace it as you enlighten our minds and our hearts through your word. We embrace it for our lives, for our families, for our marriages, for our children and our children's children and our children's children, for the legacy that you want to leave on this earth should you tarry, God. We just thank you for it right now. Transform us from the inside out. Holy Spirit, I bind every attack. I break every generational curse. And I speak life over every hearer that hears this. God, that they will be motivated by your spirit to make a change. God, moving closer to you in Jesus' name. God, I pray that you would open up your word. God, the Holy Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth. God, that we would open up your word and begin to get a, a deeper desire for your word and for intercession in you. In Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. And amen. Saints, I love you. Amen. But more than me loving you. And Pastor T loving you. And my family loving you. God loves you. We love you. I'm so proud of the graduates on today. You did a great thing. God has a purpose and a destiny. Don't forget what God is doing in your life. I want to encourage you to join us for our one o'clock Zoom meeting, our one o'clock Zoom meeting. That's going to be today. We'll be dealing with love and respect. I want you to get all of those that are couples and uh, that are in relationships Get on the, the horn. Let them know that we'll be doing love and respect, that they need to be there for that. Amen. And we're going to look for God to do some great and mighty things in that today. Amen. Love and respect. I want you to get them there. One, I'm trying to get the number. Again, that Zoom number is 402-871-8321. 402-871-8321. Eight three two one. It's Sunday at one p.m. today. Again, if you know of anybody that's in a relationship, any teenagers, I want them on as well. If they're uh, thirteen and up, praise God. We'll be talking about communication and relationships. This energizer cycle. How we can go to the next level. I want to encourage you. Any marriages, people that you know that are married, they don't have to be members of this church. Uh, people that are in relationships and they want to. Uh, change and transformation in their relationships, please invite them. Again, don't forget the three questions that I asked you today. What area of your life has God blessed you? Secondly, what does the treasure of your heart look like? And thirdly, what are the good things that God wants to produce through your life? The simplified version was, what has God blessed you with? Is your heart right so God can work through you? And thirdly, what is going to come through you for the sake of the kingdom? Amen. So the two things, homework, and again, our love and respect seminar today at 1 p.m., praise God. The Zoom number again, get your pen, 402-871-8321. Thank you for joining us. Praise God. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in today. I love you. God bless you. Know as we go out that you're blessed, you're highly favored. God's going to be doing some great things in your life. Tune in. The children's message is up next. We got an awesome message for the children. Know that you're blessed, blessed, blessed going in, blessed going out. You're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. Your best days are ahead of you. Your worst days are behind you. Walk in that. Amen. Watch what God does. Glory to God.